public that this is an affordable house. This is a sustainable house of today, not of the future. It was just about this time, two years ago, that we were in a cafe here in Washington starting to write the proposal for this one. And so there was about a, a year plus long design process and then um, a little bit longer uh, for, for construction and, and getting it moved and ready for the mall. Right away we want to make sure that there's a life to the house after the competition. And so we had a great team of people that wanted to design something beautiful for Houston, Texas, but that also make it on the more affordable end, looking at a different income bracket than most homes on the competition. $140,000 is for a prototype that we have behind us here. Um, $110,000 is for construction, labor, and materials. And uh, $30,000 is for the solar panels and the evacuated tubes for hot water we have on the roof. It shows people that, um, especially houses like mine, and they're like ours and a few others, that uh, it can be done without real crazy intimidating technologies. It can be done affordably today with, uh, with your contractor that you know he can Things like this help them figure out how to build and how to feel comfortable building like this. For those people looking to do something in their own house, um, I think one of the one of the simpler things to do is to start with uh, materials, especially when you get into wood. You want FSC certified, sustainably harvested wood. We have a biodegradable mattress, which, uh, in, in looking at sustainability, mattresses are actually one of the, the leading things that fill up landfills because. Um, because they're not recycled content. Rainwater is collected off the roof. It passes through this uh, largely sculptural element. It's then filtered through this planter and eventually goes into the cisterns. That water is used for irrigation for a garden. And if the house is located in a place where the codes allow it, you can use it for gray water uh, to reflush toilets and things like that. We've actually set this up to work on an iPhone as well. So there's an iPhone app where you can control and monitor the entire house. So if you, if you go to the office and remember that you, you left the light on in the, in the bedroom, you can turn that off. There's also monitoring, so you can monitor how much energy, energy you've produced that day, that month, that week. Um, measure your hot water, how much hot water you have in the tank, um, and the other systems of the house. Technology to educate the homeowner on, on how they can respond to the, the climate needs of their house. Rather than making a huge upfront investment, um, you can start with a handful of panels for about a thousand dollars a piece plus the two hundred dollars for each microinverter and then as you gain more money and more resources to expand um, you can do so and just plug it right into the line. We can have an affordable home, a sustainable home, a solar power home that is affordable to average um, low income to moderate income American families. There are things that people may have forgotten about like ceiling fans that can reduce your energy costs even in the winter or things like our solar dryer which we can hang our clothes out to yes. dry in less than two hours. We really need to combine policy with education and if you take educating the public and getting everybody on board about what we can do and what we're capable of then really what you take that with the policy that's coming from Congress together that's really going to make a solution.